Welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Anjali Daimari, Associate Professor in the Department of English, Guwahati University. We are now going to do the course Indian Writing in English. And the module that I have before you is Contesting Indianness in Indian Novel, Culture, Language and History. The history of the emergence of Indian novel is a simultaneous history of the emergence of Indianness or fashioning of a unique Indian self which finds the best medium of wide articulation with the emergence of novel. The genealogy of novel is also therefore replete with the nuances of the socio-cultural events affecting the country as the literary history can hardly be aloof from the struggle of national awakening. This module situates the intense dialectic of the re-examination of the issues of language, culture and history in the context of the Indian novel in English. The module is designed to help you read critically the history of Indian English novel, B to understand the important socio-cultural events, context, instrumental to the history of emergence of novel, C position the major novelist in the proper historical context, D to apprehend the major texts, E to understand the socio-cultural and literary dynamics of the genre. Alright, now let us examine the main ideas, issues and themes. The history of novel is the history of the process of enculturation in the context of familiarity with an alien language. During the colonial period, the familiarity with the English tongue and Western culture, especially familiarity with the canonical and popular texts were fruitful for the novelists writing in the Indian languages as the knowledge of the classics of Western literature helps one to be accommodated within the power structure in terms of wider circulation and readership. Hence, the beginning of the genre is replete with the borrowed examples, epigraphs and quotations from Byron, Scott, Cooper, Shakespeare and Coleridge. Indigenous novel writing during 1930s and 1940s was highly influenced not by the history of Indian nationalism. Indian nationalism was the primary unifying factor in terms of linguistic and cultural experiments. The question of language persisted and most of the contemporary novelists used English and their regional languages as creative medium. C. Raja Gopalachari appropriately claimed English as Saraswati's gift to India as English was the best medium for the task of national unification. The process of indigenization and celebration of national imaginary is replaced by the renewed concern with character development and psychological intensity as well as the idea of an estranged individual caught in the web of the deadening aspects of modern life in the 1950s, 60s and 1970s. Novel characteristically explores the sense of alienation which in turn is reflective of the situation of the Indian writers writing in English. The alienation is seemingly the result of an English education and the consequent elite status which increases the gulf between the writer and the masses. Moreover, the question of taking recourse to the dominant forms of Western fiction becomes apparent. The publication of Midnight's Children in 1981 is said to have brought about a renaissance in Indian writing in English and the 1980s witnessed a second coming for the Indian novel in English. Now we shall look into the literary representations that is beginnings of the novel in English. Although the 1930s is commonly viewed as the decade of emergence of the Indian novel, we can trace the genealogy into the previous century. Shoshi Chandar Dutt's novels like Shankar, 
published in 1885 and the Young Zamindar published in 1883 deal with the question of nationalism and the relation between the British and the Indian subjects. A. Madhavaya who lived from 1872 to 1925 in Thile Govindam published in 1908 deals with similar themes of subjugation and cultural pride as well as as an assertion of the antiquity and superiority of Indian civilization in relation to Europe. Sarat Kumar Ghosh follows the similar theme of cultural assertion in Prince of Destiny, The New Krishna, published in 1909. Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay, who lived from 1838 to 1894, is noted for his only novel written in English, Raj Mohan's Wife, which deals with the trials and tribulations of the middle class life. Lal Bihari Day, who lived from 1824 to 1894, takes recourse to the marginal sections of the society in Govinda's Samantha or the history of a Bengali Rayat, published in 1874. The revised edition is renamed Bengali Peasant Life and traces the history of the poor Ugrashatriya family in West Bengal. Now let us come to a discussion of the Indian novel in the 1930s and the 1940s. As mentioned, the socio-political events of the 1930s and 40s were instrumental in shaping the thematic and stylistic experiments of the genre. The fictional world of the novel replicated the cultural hybridity and formation of a national consciousness during these periods. As Leela Gandhi argues, and I quote, caught between the sometimes complementary and sometimes opposing claims of home and the world, the novelists of the 1930s and 1940s owed their inspirations and conditions for their emergence to two contexts. The social and political upheavals of the Gandhian whirlwind and the era of late modernism in Europe. At home, this period marked the most visibly triumphant stage of anti-colonial nationalism. Events like the 1930s civil disobedience movement, I quote, helped to furnish a significantly popular basis for the energies of Indian anti-colonialism. Second, it postulated Gandhi as the icon of such randomly distributed energies. It was at this time that the Mahatma theme was announced within the nationalist agitation as a uniquely imaginative, carefully symbolic and irresistibly fictionalizable way of doing politics. This is from novelists of the 1930s and 1940s by Leela Gandhi. As argued by Leela Gandhi, their experiments with social realism and corresponding attention to the surface of life in pre-independent India catches within fiction the complex alliances, misalliances, transformations and failures of the Indian national movement. Moreover, these novels are pioneering in their effort to render into English the exuberant dialects of northern India. Although awkward, Anand's exposition of Pidgin English prepares the way for the subsequent linguistic and cultural translations of Indian English writers. Now let us come to a discussion of the Mahatma novels. Hence we witness the proliferation of Mahatma novels written in English and also in other languages in this period. Prem Chan's Prema Hashram 1921 and Ranga Bhumi 1925 in Hindi Raman Lal Vasant Lal Desai's Ram Lakshmi, published in 1940 in Gujarati, Jiti Madhulkar's Muktatma, published in 1933 in Marathi, and Satinath Bhaduri's Jagori, published in 1946 in Bengali, use Gandhi as a governing trope 
or motive in their fictional exploration of contemporary India. K. S. Venkataramani's Murugan the Thila, published in 1927, K. Nagarajan's Athavar House, published in 1937, R. K. Narayan's comic portrait of Gandhi in Waiting for the Mahatma, published in 1955, Bhabani Bhattacharya's So Many Hungers, published in 1947, dealing with the Quit India Movement are some important works. The nationalistic novels written by Muslim writers are peopled with Hindu characters. For example, Amir Ali's Conflict, published in 1947, is replete with Hindu characters and it dramatizes the national movement. Similarly, K. A. Abbas's Tomorrow is Ours, a novel of the India of today, published in 1943, explores the issues of nationalism and untouchability. Anand integrates all strands of nationalism and cosmopolitanism and Marxism and Gandhism and Nehruvian socialism in his writing. His first novel, Untouchable, published in 1935, narrates the story of the marginal sections of the society in terms of narrating the story of Bakha, a young sweeper who is ostracized. Kuli, published in 1936, and Two Leaves and a Bud, published in 1937, project his concern with questions of caste and class. Kuli, known as a social chronicle, narrates the story of young Manu, an orphan from Kangra and his travels from the idyllic hills to the city of Bombay. Two Leaves and a Bad tells the saga of Gangu, a Punjabi peasant exploited to work in a tea estate in Assam. Anand's subsequent trilogy, The Village, published in 1939, Across the Black Waters, published in 1941, and The Sword and the Sickle, published in 1942, recounts the life and career of Lal Singh, a Punjabi peasant. Across the Black Waters is perhaps the only World War novel in Indian English literature. The Big Heart, published in 1945, Seven Summers, published in 1951, The Private Life of an Indian Prince, published in 1953, The Old Woman and the Cow, published in 1960, The Road, published in 1963, The Death of a Hero, published in 1964, Morning Face, published in 1970, and Confession of a Lover, published in 1976, are some important works. Let us now discuss Raja Rao, a prominent early Indian novelist in English. He was born in 1908 and lived till 2001. Rao continues the political and ideological preoccupations of Anand. In Kantapura, published in 1938, the tenets of Gandhian thought emerge in the village through Murthy, a radical who unifies the villagers to fight against the British. The Gandhian message is imparted in the form of a traditional Harikatha, which introduces Gandhi as an epic hero. The Serpent and the Rope, published in 1960, is broader in scope, spans across Europe and India and is a spiritual travelogue recounting the story of Ramaswamy and the Catan Shakespeare published in 1965 continues the tradition of philosophical fiction. According to Rao, The Serpent and the Rope is a novel of the discovery of the Guru. The Cat and Shakespeare shows how one functions after one has found the Guru. The 11th century philosopher Ramanujachari's idea of achieving personal salvation through the simple gestures of surrender or faith is central to the Cat and Shakespeare. Comrade Kirillov, published in 1976, is replete with the figure of Gandhi and the chess master and his moves 
published in 1988, is a saga of doomed love. Ahmed Ali, another writer who lived from 1910 to 1994, is known for his pre-partition novel Twilight in Delhi, published in 1940, which offers a culturally representative view of the colonial encounter. The novel is a saga of the historical erosion of a whole culture. Ali's Ocean of Night, published in 1964, is also a remarkable work. Govinda's Vishnu Das Dasani, who lived from 1909 to 2000, is noted for All About Age Hatta, which is published in 1948. Set in British India, the novel recounts the tale of the growth and education of the eponymous hero H. Hatta, son of a European merchant seaman and a lady from Penang. Episodic in structure, the self-conscious novel records his attempt to find a higher truth. Sudhin N. Ghosh who lived from 1899 to 1965, wrote an interconnected tetralogy of novels. And Gazelle's Leaping, published in 1949, Cradle of the Clouds, published in 1951, The Vermilion Boat, published in 1953, and The Flame of the Forest, published in 1955. This tetralogy, written in the style of a Bildungsroman, documents the life and growth of a nameless orphan narrator over a 20-year period. Aubrey Menon, who lived from 1912 to 1989, sketches a different world imbued with the nuances of sexuality in its rigorous objection to all forms of sexual hypocrisy. The Abode of Love published in 1956, narrates the story of Henry James Prince, a promiscuous curate who debunks the facade of Victorian respectability. The Fig Tree, published in 1957, The Prevalence of Witches, published in 1947, The Stumbling Stone, published in 1949, are some very important works. Now let's come to a discussion of another very prominent novelist, R.K. Narayan, who lived from 1906 to 2001. Narayan is best remembered for works infused with political or social commentary and the creator of the locale, Malgudi, the colonial district town with its varied culture and places, post office, bank, lanes, suburb, roadside shops, slums, missionary school and government bungalows. In his fiction, Malgudi emerges as the brave new world of India facing rapid urbanization. Swami and Friends, published in 1935, traces the transition from innocence to experience through the perspective of Swami. The Bachelor of Arts, published in 1937, narrates the saga of a young graduate, Chandran, and Narayan's implicit critique of the kind of education Swami and Chandran receive reverberates in both novels. The English Teacher, published in 1945, The Dark Room, published in 1938, Mr. Sampath, a, a printer of Malgudi, published in 1949, A Tiger for Malgudi, published in 1980, Talkative Men, published in 1985, and The World of Nagraj, published in 1990, The Vendor of Sweets, published in 1967, Waiting for the Mahatma, published in 1955, The Painter of Signs, published in 1977, The Financial Expert, 1952, the Guide, 1958, are some of his notable contributions. Let us now proceed to a discussion of Indian novel in the 1950s, the 1960s and 1970s. After independence, Mulraj Anand, R.K. Narayan and Raja Rao continued to write and in 1960, The Guide won the Sahitya Academy Award. 
P. M. Nityanandan born in 1928, produced the first campus novel in Indian English with his Long Long Days, published in 1960. Manohar Malgonkar, born in 1913, wrote The Princess, which was published in 1963. Kushwan Singh, born in 1915, is best known for his novel on partition. Train to Pakistan, which was published in 1956. It is set in the small village of Manomajra on the banks of the Satlaj, where the only event of importance is a train crossing the railway bridge. I Shall Not Hear the Nightingale, published in 1959, Delhi, a novel, published in 1989, are some of his other works. Raskin Bond, who was born in 1934, is noted for the acute evocation of nostalgia and melancholic note written in The Room on the Roof, published in 1956, which won him the John Llewellyn Rice Memorial Prize. The novel chronicles a lonely Eurasian boy's quest for bonding. Time Stops at Shamli, published in 1989, sketches a provincial world of mutual fulfillment. In M. Anantanarayanan's The Silver Pilgrimage, published in 1961, he turned to experimenting with non-Western narrative forms by taking recourse to Dandin's Dasakumara Charita instead of the Western picaresque novel to narrate the adventures of Jayasurya, a prince of 16th century Sri Lanka. He also uses lines from Shakespeare, Dan and Rilke, as well as the Tamil poets. Experimentation with different narrative techniques and exploration of the prevailing condition of post-independence India characterizes the fictional world of Arun Joshi, who lived from 1939 to 1993. The narrative of The Foreigner, published in 1968, collates time and geographical space. The Apprentice, a work which was published in 1974, is a monologue that tells the story of Ratan Rathor, a government official. The Last Labyrinth, the Last Labyrinth, published in 1981, won the Sahit Academy Award and uses the trope of the labyrinth as structural device. The City and the River, published in 1990, is a fable about the corruption of power. The Strange Case of Billy Biswas, published in 1971, narrates the story of Bimal Biswas and his obsession with Adivasi culture. This satisfaction with the metropolis and modernity is a recurrent feature of the novels of this period. Now let us discuss Indian novel since the 1980s. Indian novel since 1980s is more dialogic in nature and scope as it proceeds to accommodate a polyphonic linguistic and cultural landscape. The complex process of decolonization results in the trends of reimagining the nation on an epic scale along with the persistent realization of the failure of the nation state and consequently the novelist explored the theme of alienation from the perspective of rewriting national history. The allegorical parallel of the growth to maturity of the individual and the growth of an independent India, nostalgia for a lost unity are some of the recurrent features. Experiments with metafictional narratives and linguistic potentials came to the forefront. The desire to adapt the European form of the novel to indigenous literary traditions, what Salman Rushdie calls chatnification of history, is a transformative and preservative process of preserving the distinctive flavors and traditions of India. Rashti's metaphor is inclusive of the ingredients instrumental to the making of history, which does not yield 
to a single representative apparatus. Upamanyu Chatterjee's English August, published in 1988, deals with the idea of choosing the appropriate medium, a new kind of Desi English when the protagonist, Agastya, is confronted with a variety of views on the role of English in India. Fragmentation of national imaginary dominates Rukun Advani's writing in Beethoven Among the Cows, published in 1994. Amit Chaudhary projects Bombay as the symbol of a disconcerting modernity only to be contrasted with Calcutta, the only city I know that is timeless. A strange and sublime address published in 1991 and Afternoon Rag published in 1993, Freedom Song published in 1998 are replete with a poetic evocation of the loss of self and Calcutta. Kiran Nagarkar, who was born in 1949, explores the lived realities of Bombay's hybrid culture in Ravan and Eddy, published in 1995. Alan Seeley, born in 1951, is the author of The Trotternama, published in 1988, and The Everest Hotel, published in 1988, Hero published in 1991. The Trotanama is significant in exploring the fact that historiography as a genre is complicit with the hegemonic tendencies of European enlightenment. Shashi Tharoor's The Great Indian Novel published in 1989, adapts the story of the Mahabharata to an allegory of modern Indian history and offers an interesting perspective on the development of modern India. Amitav Ghosh, born in 1956, is the author of The Circle of Reason, which was published in 1986, which aims to rediscover a continuing tradition of cultural exchange for India. His landscape spans across geographical locales, across the Indian Ocean, to the Gulf States and Egypt. In An Antique Land, which was published in 1992, he recovers the lost traces of historical narrative from the perspective of a slave. The Calcutta Chromosome 1996, a futuristic detective story, The Shadow Lines 1988, The Glass Palace 2000, Hungry Tide, The Sea of Poppies, meditate on large historical and nationalist issues such as diaspora, migration, refugees, homeland and colonial hegemony. Mukul Kesavan, born in 1957 and Vikram Chandra, born in 1961, addressed the issue of translating Indian history into the form of the novel. The relationship between the Muslim population and the nationalist movement pervades Kesavan's Looking Through Glass, which was published in 1995. Vikram Chandra's Red Earth and Pouring Rain, published in 1995, revolves around the fate of Sanjay, whose reincarnation as a monkey adds unique perspective to the story. Vikram Seth's A Suitable Boy, published in 1993, is based on a romance plot, the choice of a suitable boy for the heroine, Lata Mehra. And slowly, these novelists transform the alien tongue into a contemporary Indian language. This module on the history of Indian novel in English situates the genre in the polyphonic linguistic and cultural landscape. An attempt was made here to address the dialogic process of colonial encounter and the complex process of decolonization. The themes of Indianness, persistent alienation and imagining the nation, the desire to rewrite national history, self-fashioning and the politics of resistance were discussed in terms of discussions of major novels and novelists. Thank you.